Hey guys, how's it going? So I often get asked a lot of questions about my photography process, how I shoot, how I edit, and even how I store my photos. And so today I wanted to run you through my process from beginning to end and show you the tools I use along the way. There are a few things that I'm sure I do differently to most photographers, but these processes I've kind of worked out have worked best for me, especially for my travel photography. And as always guys, before we get started, if you could like this video, comment, or even consider subscribing, that would be awesome. So to kick things off, let's start off with planning. This is a really small portion of my process, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but it's something I like to do whenever I'm visiting a new location. I try to plan out my shoot and kind of have an idea of where I'm gonna go if it's a new location. Just having a small plan with a list of spots you wanna visit in a new location is gonna make a world of difference when it comes to your photos. So usually before I arrive to a location, I try to look for photos on Google or Instagram to just get an idea of what it looks like. I try not to look at a lot of photos from photographers in these areas because I just wanna go in fresh, but I think having an idea of the layout wherever you're going it's just gonna be really beneficial when it comes to shooting and along with planning these locations I also take a look at the weather like the wind and the time the Sun's gonna be setting because that's really gonna impact how I shoot if I'm shooting along the coast I'm definitely gonna check the winds even the swell to kind of get an idea of what thing I'd be able to photograph down at the beach and obviously over planning is a really silly thing too because you're gonna get to a location and just notice a bunch of new things that your eye might want to capture so I wouldn't suggest sticking to your plan too much but just having a rough idea of what you want to do is gonna be really beneficial so the next step in my photography process would be the shooting portion. Clearly this next portion is the most fun, is when you get to go out and actually capture your photos. And if you wanna get a better idea of how I go about things, I would recommend watching my last video. In this video, I had a GoPro on me while I was taking photos down at the beach. And here you can kind of see what I look for while I'm shooting and also the locations and style of images I look for. Like I mentioned in that video, when it comes to my travel photography, I like to shoot on small low profile cameras. In my mind, they need to be light and they need to look good because if I'm bringing it along with me on walks, hikes, coffees, it's something I wanna be able to bring along and not be too much of a burden and also have something that people that I go along with aren't intimidated by. Like many of you know, this camera for me is the Fujifilm X100F and I like to have it set up in a pretty minimalist approach. I have it set to aperture priority to make sure I'm not fiddling with my settings when I'm out on a photo walk. It just lets me enjoy the moments and kind of focus on the images that are in front of me. The SD cards I use are these ones. These are the SanDisk 64 gig 170 cards. I find these so incredibly reliable and I've never had an issue with any of them. I think the 64 gigabytes for this style of photography along with the file sizes the Fujifilm pumps out to be perfect for me. I've never run out of shots when I'm using these on my Fuji film and they are pretty affordable to pick up. I also keep all of my SD cards in this little hard shell case. This has been a lifesaver for me and I totally recommend it to all photographers. I didn't have one for quite a while and it's really made a massive difference to my peace of mind. I'll leave links to what I'm using below in case you want to go buy some. So the next slightly more boring phase in my photography process is backing up. So once I've gone out and taken my photos, I like to bring them back to the studio and back them up as soon as possible. I feel leaving the photos on your SD card for too long might lead to some mix ups So I try to do this right away when I get back. And so to do this, I have this little dongle that I picked up off Amazon that's USB-C straight into my Mac. It's pretty fast, but to be honest, it's a little annoying and sometimes ejects accidentally. So I'm really excited that Apple brought back the SD cards in the new Macs. Next, because of my incredible brand loyalty, I like to use SanDisk SSDs, both the one terabyte and the two terabytes to back up the photos from the SD cards. I have several of these and I think they do the job perfectly. They're small, sturdy, light, and they are USB-C connections as well. So it means transferring files is really quick. So once everything is plugged in, I like to transfer the photos from the SD card over to a smaller SSD, a 500 gigabyte SanDisk as my working drive. This working drive is what I edit off and also what I bring along with me if I ever wanna edit on the go. I always ensure that I have two copies of the photos from a shoot. So once they're on the working drive, I'll then put them to one of the backup drives and then format the SD card. But if I don't have the time to get them over to the backup drives, I'll just ensure that I don't format that SD card. You might be confused as to why I have a smaller SSD around 500 gigs, but that's just to ensure that I don't let that SSD pile up and not stick to my own backup process. It kind of forces my hand to stick to this thing because otherwise the SSD is just going to fill up. So it's something of a bit of kick in my own ass to keep up with it all. So the next stage in my photography process that a lot of you are interested in is the editing side of things. So when it comes to editing, the first thing I do is cull my images. It's rare that I'll edit all of the photos from a photo walk. So going through them and picking out the selects is really important. Deciding on the right program to use, if you are working on a bigger project with a ton of files, I would suggest using something like Adobe Bridge. This can get through the raw files really quickly and be able to cull them a lot faster. If we're using my travel photography as an example, it's rare that I get over 500 to 1000 photos from a shoot. So using Lightroom is a great way to cull and edit all in one place. So this next stage is where I do 
differ from a lot of photographers. I like to create different catalogs for each shoot I go on. I know Lightroom is designed to have one big catalog and you use collections for each shoot. But to be honest, getting into the habit of creating different catalogs for a shoot just works better for me. And should there be any issues with corruptions with catalogs, it means that I don't lose the edits from all of my photos. It would just be the one that does get corrupted. And personally, using the collections tab as a way of organizing the images from individual shoots has just been a much easier way for me and keeps everything nice and clean. So when creating the catalog, I like to save the catalog directly to my Mac's SSD and also copy that file over to the SSD that the photos are stored on just as an additional backup. Next, I'll go on to create two collections, a selects and an edit. So when I'm going through all of the photos, if I right click on the selects collection and set that as the target collection, I can go through all of the photos using the B key on my keyboard to add photos to that selects collection. Once I've gone through all of the photos, I'll head over to the selects collection, open that up and start editing those photos there. From there, the same thing applies. I'll right click onto the edits collection, set that as the target collection. And as I edit each photo, I'll move them over to the edits collection. By the end of my editing session, I've got a collection of photos that are fully edited and I've gone through all of them to make sure I didn't miss anything along the way. If you are interested in how exactly I do edit my photos in terms of the colors and how I handle different photos, be sure to check out some of the videos I've done in the past, especially on the Fujifilm Raws. But if you are interested in something more specific, leave a comment below or send me a message and we can try sort something out. Also, I do have a free Lightroom preset. This is a film style preset you can use on your photos. So all you need to do is sign up to my email list on my website, I'll leave a link below and you can go download that and use that on your photos. So the final part of my photography process is sharing. When it comes to sharing my photos, I like to do this in a variety of formats and in a variety of places. Many of you would have seen I created a zine a few years ago, so that was a really great way to showcase my photos. I also post them up on Instagram here on YouTube. And also lately, I've been trying to post a lot more on my website. For as long as I can remember as a photographer, creating collections and series has always been the goal. That's kind of what my entire Patreon page is about. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave another link for that. But that's more about collections and series I create as a photographer. I think posting single images to Instagram is a really cool way to get people interested in your work. But personally, I like to have a collection of images that tell a bigger story. That's why I've been posting a lot more on my website and on my blog, but particularly here on YouTube, I get the opportunity to share a lot more of the stories and the photo walks I go on. If I can offer one suggestion to you, what I'm learning more and more is that you should try and be posting your photos on your own website. Posting them up to Instagram and stuff like that and social media is great to get people interested, but having them all on your website gives you the opportunity to really showcase them how you wanna do it. Personally, I like to create gallery pages on my Squarespace website. And so if anyone is interested in a series I've done, I can go straight to my own website and show them. I don't need to go onto Instagram and use it that way. So that's kind of a recommendation I would give you if you are interested in doing bigger projects and sharing series. And there you go, guys. That is my entire travel photography process from planning to sharing. I'm sure I do a variety of things differently to most photographers or even the correct way, but this is a process I found works best for me and something I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any further questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'm I'm sure there's going to be someone else that's interested in the same thing you are but otherwise guys again if you could like comment and subscribe that would be awesome and i'll see you in the next video